I don't mind admitting that I do like a good cabriolet. For me, one of life's simple joys is getting your drive on with nothing but the clouds above your head. And it almost doesn't matter what that convertible is. The nippy Mazda MX-5 or the powerful M4 with its folding metal roof. But I do draw the line at the Mercedes-Benz SLK. The last one I drove promised good performance but didn't really deliver. The one before that packed a monstrous V8, but its gearbox was horrendously incapable of dealing with the power. It was like Merck just couldn't get the recipe quite right. For this latest version, they haven't changed the engineering too much, but they've done something that might just get rid of the bad mojo they've renamed it. In keeping with the company's new name-changing directive which aligns models to the chassis on which they're based, it's now called the SLC because it has C-Class underpinnings. And in the spirit of things, I'll play along. I'll forget all my previous appraisals and their misgivings and pretend that this is an entirely new model, even though it isn't. The SLC is a very nice looking thing, I'll give it that. Merck have its roadster proportions spot on, with a long bonnet, low ride height and short rear deck. The front now gets the company's diamond radiator grille and LED lights as standard. At the back, the tail lights have been reworked for a look that is an appreciable amount more effective than it used to be. And in true roads to form, it looks better with the roof down. A single button push operates the metal top, which can fold away at speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour, as long as you start the operation while standing still. No, I don't know why they did it that way. But I do know that they've built some common sense into the roof mechanism. Ordinarily, in hardtop convertibles, this foldy bit has to be down before the roof will operate. The idea being that with it up, you get more boot space. But now with Mercedes-Benz's Vario roof convenience feature, which is optional, of course, the roof mechanism will fold that down for you. It may not sound like a big deal, but it really was a pain in the buttocks if previously you wanted to put the roof down and had forgotten to put the separator into the correct position. You'd have to unbuckle, get out of the car, open the boot, fold the thing down, get back in the car, buckle up, wait for the roof to fold away, and then go. Which might sound like the very definition of a first world problem, but it was annoying. Now that that's sorted, we can focus on the mechanical setup. Powering the SLC 300 is a 2-litre four-cylinder turbo with 180 kilowatts, 370 newton meters, giving it a very respectable 0 to 100 time of 5.6 seconds. And the whole setup feels really nice. The steering's not too heavy, it's not too light. And similarly, the ride finds a great balance between sportiness and comfort. And that's even without the option of Mercedes-Benz's active dampers, which should make it better. We covered over 300 kilometers from Joburg to Clarence in the SLC, and on the highway and long open stretches, it was perfectly respectable. We're driving the middle of the range option. The SL43 AMG tops the range, and with a 270 kilowatt twin turbo V6, it probably packs a few more thrills. I say probably because it's fitted with the same 9G Tronic automatic 9 speed gearbox as our test car, and well, the news isn't good. And unfortunately, it is becoming a bit of a theme when we test Mercedes-Benz's because we said the same thing about the C300 when we tested that, and it has a similar gearbox. It is lethargic, and even using the pedals doesn't help because it feels ponderous and really outdated compared to the efforts of its competitors. Fortunately, though, the SLC has a little button that helps things. Pushing this silver square seems to give the SLC a shot of adrenaline. The first time I gave it a go, I found myself saying out loud, that's more like it. Its responses are tightened up, it feels a little more alive, and although the gearbox still doesn't behave as well as it should, the rest of the bits do a good job masking its shortcomings. Once we were in the sandstone mountains of the Eastern Free State and their more challenging roads, the SLC began to show that it can actually be a lot of fun to drive. And that's not something I would have said about the previous SLK. There is the small matter of the interior though. 
It is a very well sorted cab, good comfort, decent spec and it feels like a roadster should. And although it has been tweaked for this updated model and it is a good interior, it's still not as good as Mercedes-Benz's other cabins, which are superb. Experiencing the latest CE or S-Class and then driving the SLC is a bit like being shown the latest iPhone or Samsung, whatever your preference, and then being told, here, have a Nokia. You know it'll do the job a mobile phone is supposed to do, but you'd really rather have the option that's more advanced. The SLC interior is bolted together well enough, even rougher surfaces don't show up that scuttle shake, and the materials are top class, but the design is definitely starting to lag behind the rest of the family. You may have expected that with a new name, the SLC was in fact a new model. In reality, it's a facelift of the SLK. That means it looks sharper and has a few more creature comforts and a new engine lineup. But the name change has also brought about a bit of an attitude change. Merck's compact roadster has always managed to be a docile cruiser, but now give the SLC some space and a chance to show off and it will prove to you that it can be entertaining to drive, just like a roadster should be. With a new 2.0-litre turbo motor and a more involving drive, the SLC is a better all-round roadster than the SLK ever was. Good looks and a comfortable, albeit dated, interior complete the package. There aren't too many options in the category. BMW Z4 is the only metal folding roof roadster with similar power at a similar price, although production of that model has recently ceased. 